Hello friends, a very warm welcome. This is Ishan on behalf of Edureka. So today we will be looking into what are Lambda expressions in Java. So we'll see Lambda expressions. We'll understand what is a functional interface. What are the various parameters which you can pass in the Lambda? How we can use Lambda as an object? How we can capture the values? And lastly, we'll also see method references with the Lambdas. So to begin with, why Lambda expressions. So guys Lambda expressions are a fundamental approach to functional programming in Java. So this is an introduction to functional programming in Java. So what is this functional programming? Functional programming is a programming paradigm, right? And you can say it's a mathematical way of solving a problem. You can just correlate your functional programming as a mathematical function. So functional programming is always based on the lambda calculus and we will now see and proceed with the lambda expressions. So Java lambda expressions are the ways or you can say it's a first step to begin with the functional programming in Java. So an anonymous function that will have a no name and it won't belong to any class. It will provide a clear and a concise way to represent a method interface via an expression. So it's going to be a one single expression that would be all. So it provides the implementation of functional interface and simplifies the process of software development, right? So programming is simplified when we talk about the Lambda expressions. So guys synthetically when we are talking about the Lambda expressions. So we got this arrow operator. Right, so we need to pass the parameters. We need to write an arrow operator and then we will write the body. So synthetically arrow operator is introduced so that we can write a lambda expression. So we have uh, declarations parentheses around parameters curly braces return keyword. These are all optional, right? So if you want you can use them with the lambda expressions. So before we begin with the lambda expression, we need to understand the term called functional interface because the entire concept of lambda expression revolves around the functional interface. So guys, functional interface is an interface in Java that contains exactly one abstract method. So the example is the runnable interface with the help of which we write a Java thread. We do have action listener which is having a method like action performed. So we can have any number of default or static methods. Java provides predefined functional interfaces so that we can deal with the functional programming very easily. And yes, of course, runnable, action listener, comparable. These are some of the examples of the functional interfaces. So this is one code snippet where you can very easily identify what is a functional interface, an interface with one single abstract method. Now by default whenever you are writing a method it is public abstract method in your interface. So this is one of the examples of a functional interface and how we can use it. So let me write some code snippet for you people in order to make you guys understand the functional interface. So I'm going to write a new Java project. So this goes like lambda expressions. So I'll write one new class. And I'm going to say this goes my lambda app with the main method and I'm going to write the package as code.edureka. So consider that I'm going to write one ride sharing application or let's say something like Ola and Uber. So I just try to take one of the use cases. So I'm going to write one interface called cab and I'm going to write only one single method called book cab. So this is by default public abstract void book cap right so this is how we deal with the methods declared in the interface now since your interface contains only one single method book cap that is why we can say it as a functional interface right so when an interface will have exactly one abstract method we can say it as a functional interface so we can even write this annotation called at the rate functional interface. So this is optional. If you want, you can put that right. So it's an informative annotation at the same time. If I'll come here and say something like void any other function or method. So this is now not supported. You see you get an error. So it says very clearly 
So cab is not a functional interface. It's invalid annotation. So this annotation makes sure that you have only one single method in your interface. So how you will use this, right? So how I can use this? So consider that there is a class called UberX, which implements cab. So when you say implement cab, so you will define the method book cab, and I can simply say UberX booked arriving soon. And how you gonna use it? So you can simply come here and say cab cab is a new of UberX, and you can say cab dot book the cab. So guys, this is one of our uh, examples how we use a functional interface. So you run it as a Java application. So it says UberX book cab arriving soon. Now this is typically a polymorphic statement, right? Now the next part is how we can simplify our coding effort. So what I can do is I can just eliminate this class and I can come here and say that let us write an anonymous class. So I'm going to write an anonymous class now. So how are you going to write an anonymous class? So you say cab cab is a new of cap. You do a control space bar if you're using Eclipse hit enter and what you see is an anonymous class implementation, right? So this goes like anonymous class implementation. So now I can come here and say cap dot book the cap. So this is once again the same fundamental. So rather than creating a separate class UberX, I can just write this anonymous class here and the things are settled for us. It's the second way how I'm going to use it, right? So this is my first way and this is my second way. Now in Java what we have, so rather than writing this anonymous class, so Java in the eighth version Oracle has introduced Lambda expressions, right? So the third concept is using a Lambda expression. Let's see how we can write a Lambda. So Lambda expression goes like cab cab. Let's comment out this part. So you say cab cab assign you put parenthesis and then you put an arrow operator and you simply finish off. So you see the same statement written as anonymous class is now reduced down in a very simpler approach and coming here. I will simply say cab dot book the cab. So you run this code. You get to see the same output Uber X book arriving soon. So we see that how Lambda expression helps us to write a functional interface implementation with an ease, right? So now when I'm talking about a Lambda expression, so where you are clear about how to write a Lambda expression. So this is a kind of a Lambda expression where we have no inputs, no return types associated with it. And guys, when I'm saying cap dot book cap, so always remember Lambda expressions. They are going to work with the functional interfaces only. All right, so functional interface always contains one single method. Now that itself is a binding for us. So coming back to the presentation now. So once we know what is a functional interface, how to write a Lambda expression. So Lambda expression can take no parameter. That's like zero parameter the way the method is right. It can take one parameter. It can take multiple parameters, right? So zero parameters where you don't pass any parameters. So this is a syntactical approach in the parenthesis. We don't pass any parameter, right? So there can be the other way around that we have one single parameter which we can pass. For example, the param we can have multiple params. For example, P1 and P2. So let us take one of the examples here and see how we can pass the parameters. So coming here, I'm going to say book cab and I will pass one parameter called source and another parameter called destination. All right. So here we are the book cab method with source and destination. So we see that we're getting an error here, right? So I'm going to come here and say two inputs. The very first input which I'm going to pass is the source and the second input which I'm going to pass is the destination. So you need not to mention the type here in the definition. I'll say Uber cab booked from the source to the destination. Right and we will say arriving soon. 
So you pass source here. For example, I'm going to pass the source as Bangalore. And let's say the destination goes like, let's say, Cook. So guys, this is how we understand your Lambda expression with some parameters, right? So previously we were having no parameters and now we are having this method with the parameters. So what I will do is I'll just comment down this part here. So this was my previous definition. This is my current method declaration. So I can even have return types associated with this, right? What I can do is I can come here and I can say something like double book cap. And now what I can do here is coming here. I will say please return something like let's say 850.12. So we are using this return statement. So Lambda expressions can also perform a return statement for us, right? So I can say something like double fair is and I can say see so fair shall be plus the fair. So we are not doing any computation or any logical part in the lambda expression. So making it simpler for you guys. So there can be any mathematical computation within the same lambda expression and thereafter you can return such a result. So let us run this code here. So it says fair shall be 850.12. So guys, this is what we got lambda expression with multiple parameters and we can even have the lambda expression with return types or without the return types, right? So that is totally upon us. How are we gonna deal with it? So let me switch back here so we can use lambda as an object, right? So a Java lambda expression is essentially an object that can be assigned to a variable and passed around. So if you have an interface, right? So you can very easily write this lambda expression with a reference. So we have done the same way, right? So it's very much equivalent to implementing a class. Now the different variables in your lambda expressions. So how they can be captured. Now that is the other part which we have to look into guys. So coming here, there can be a local variable. There can be an instance variable. There can be static variables. So Java Lambda expression can access variables that are declared outside the Lambda function body under certain circumstances. Now you are doing a computation and you definitely need to make sure that there are some variables which you need to define use here and there. So let's see how we can deal with them. So the very first one is a local variable. So you can declare the variables within the Lambda expressions, right? Instance variables. So the variable can belong to your object and that can be very easily utilized in your lambda expression. We can even have a static variable which can be used in the lambda expression. So guys, let's have a small demonstration on how we can capture the variables in the lambda expression. So considering that I'm going to take this lambda expression outside of the main method. So this is how I'm going to write one of my lambda expressions. So I'm just commenting out that part. Now considering that we have an instance variable. So this is my instance var with the value as 10. And there is a static variable, right? So static s var is, is an integer type. Let's say 100. And coming here in my lambda expression, so I can very easily say CISO instance where is plus the instance variable. We can say static variable is your lambda app dot s where and I can declare our own local variables as well. Right. So this is what we are trying to make you guys understand that when we are dealing with the lambda expressions so we can very easily use these variables declared here and there. Right. So you need not to be limited to what we have in the lambda expressions. So how we can capture the different different variables here and there. All right. So this is what we got as in your lambda expressions part guys. And now the next part is method references in Java. So when I'm talking about method references, they are very much in line to your lambdas itself. So you can say it's a feature in Java 8 and it is used to refer the method of a functional interface. 
So we can have reference to the methods of the functional interface. So this becomes more compact and you can say it is an easier form of lambda expression. So we are going to have one a more easier form of the lambda expression. So typically when we are talking about the method references, there can be reference to a static method. We can have reference to a parameter method. So what does it mean? We can have uh, methods with the parameters. We can have a reference to the instance method. That's like the method for the object. And we can even have reference to a constructor. So how this is going to work, right? So these are the four different concepts. So how it's going to work for us. So guys, when we are talking about a static method reference, so we have an interface to be precise. It's a functional interface. We write down a class and we define a method. So we just write down one of the classes and we have a method. So let it be for an instance. It's a static method. So public static int do show. Now you see the inputs to the do show method. It exactly matches the signature part of your show method. So as in a lambda expression, what I can do is I can very easily use a scope resolution operator precisely in your C++ part. So we can use the name of the class test and then scope resolution. You say a do show which will automatically map the method. So do show reference and the show, right? So it's like how we are referring to the do show method for the show method. So same way we can have methods with the parameters. So this itself is an example where we have parameters. So if it's no parameter, we can have no inputs like string S1 and S2 as of now they are the inputs. We can even have instance methods. So these are the methods with respect to you can say your object. So now this is with respect to object. So for objects, we need to create an object for the class and with the reference variable of the object, we need to provide a method reference. And lastly, if you want to come up with the constructor part, you use new operator. So let me take a couple of examples here. How we can come up with the method references in Java using the Lambda of course. So I'm going to write a separate class here. So let us say that this class goes like method references app with the main method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write one interface called calculator, right? So let's write one of the interfaces like calculator and we have a method like add. So this guy add over here. I'm taking this guy add to be some parameters within it. So I'll take some number one and I'll take a number two as an input. So coming here, I'll write down one class. So this class over here, I will define some method. It can be some other name, but the signature should exactly match your add method. So coming here, what I'll do is I'll say some class like Calci. So the class is Calci. And here I will say a public and a static and a void add something. So what you see is the method name is exactly different. It's a static method and I'm going to take the same inputs number one and number two. So here I'm going to say CISO number one and number two addition is plus num1 plus num2. So this is the definition to add something method. So what I can do is I can come here. Let's have a small C. So I'll say Kelsey dot add something like 10 and 20. And when you run this code here as Java application, so it says 10 and 20 addition is 30. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something else. So in my main method, I am going to write this calculator. Let's say C ref is Kelsey cope resolution add something. So this is known as method reference and typically precisely what we are doing is so here we are referring to a static method, right? So this is the first concept. So what we are doing is we are referring to a static method. So that is what we are doing here. Now coming here, I can say C rep dot add. Let's say 11 and 14 here. So when you run this code, what you see is 11 and 14 addition is 25. So guys, I hope this is clear to everyone, right? That how we are dealing with it. 
So moving ahead now. So once we are clear with how we can have a method reference to a static method, right? So this is reference to a static method. So to be precise, we can say this is reference to a static method. I can even do reference to a non static method or we can say it is basically for an object. So how it can be done? I can come here and I can say public void. Let's add. So I'll take the input as number one and number two again. So we'll write down the same definition. So number one and number two adds to number one plus number two. So this is what I have done. I've just changed a bit of definition part. So this was reference to a static method, right? Now what I can do here, I can come here and I can say reference to a non static method or instance method so how are we gonna deal with it now so in order to deal with it i'll say first of all i'll create the object of kelsey let's say kelsey is a new of kelsey so we got an object construction done so this is object construction statement for kelsey and now what i'll do is i'll come here and i'll say calculator let's say c ref is kelsey scope resolution let's add now this is what we again understand as a method reference so you come here and you say cref dot add some 12 and 23 when you run this code here, it says 12 and 23 adds to 35 so guys, this is what we have method reference with the help of a non static context. So we can even have something with respect to constructor, right? So third one is where we can have reference to a constructor. For reference to a constructor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another example. I'm going to write one class called paint window. Let's take the class as message and so in the message, I'll take one constructor. So we'll have one input to the constructor. So that's like we are going to write something in the message, right? So I'll say CISO message is plus the message. And I'll also write one of the interfaces here, right? So let's say interface goes like some messenger and messenger will have one of methods which returns a message. Let's say get message. And this message will also take some message as input, right? So we got this guy as a functional interface. So with one single method, this is a functional interface again. So the way we had this calculator guy as a functional interface. So lambdas method references, they all work with functional interfaces. That's like one single function. So commenting out these uh, snippets here and what I'm going to do now is I am going to say messenger, let's say mref is message scope resolution new. Now, what is this? This is known as reference to your constructor, right? So, this is the third implementation where we got method references with respect to your, sorry, my bad. So, here we're going to put a message. This is the method reference. And now, what you can do? So guys, you can simply say your mref dot get the message. You pass the message, right? So I'm going to pass this code here. Let's say search the candle rather than cursing the darkness. So let us execute this program here and see what's going to happen for us. So you see that we got a method referred. It says messages search the candle rather than cursing the darkness. So this is method reference example linked to your lambda expression so we got three important concepts done for the day so let's see what are they the very first one what is a functional interface second concept what is a lambda expression and the third concept goes like your method references so this is all from my side for the day guys i hope you have enjoyed the video so in case you have enjoyed the video so do subscribe to the youtube channel and do like our facebook page so once again this is ishan on behalf of edureka thank you for being with us bye bye guys take care